I was told that I maybe could be an assistant mechanic and maybe be a gasoline attendant. So obviously uh, the pressure for me to succeed was that much harder than everybody else. If we hadn't known, I'd probably be dead, maybe. Or I'd be robbing a store or something. I don't know. Like, I mean, I just I don't think I'd be here. Who signed off on this? So if you can take that up and get that back to me. Yeah. Looks good, though, yeah. Good registration. No one really wants to admit that people have learning challenges. Sign in yellow, pretty much. No one knew what I had. Sign in yellow. Yeah. No one had any idea. I'd get tested and tested. Yeah. They called my parents over. They met with them. And they said, okay, here's what it is. Uh, your son will never do high school. He said um, he probably will never have a regular job. If he's lucky and works hard, he could probably be a, an assistant mechanic at a gas station. And luckily they didn't listen. So he went to a school in Buffalo called the Gao School. And it specialized in dyslexia. It's for young boys with dyslexia. And it prepares you to go to college or university. When I entered grade 10, I had approximately a grade 5 reading level and grade 6 math level. And then when I finished, I graduated with honors, second highest school marks. I get that question asked a lot. You know, do you see dyslexia as an obstacle or not? And if you'd asked me that probably a long time ago, I would have said yes. But in some ways, I think it gives me an advantage. Hi, Pauline Jay. I need to do a letter. Um, because we look at things outside of the box. We take a different approach to it. And people always say no, and we're going, why? Like, we question things, so we want to know why. People say I'm tenacious as a pit bull. Like, I just won't give up. I mean, if I had, I, I think I probably, you know, wouldn't be here today. Mr. Jordan. He's never made uh, uh, the fact that he has dyslexia a secret, which uh, aids and abets everyone's ability to communicate that they may have a problem, whether it be uh, numbers or, or vowels or spelling or organization, those types of things, because after all, he's in the same boat as, as everybody else. It's a contentious issue, that's all, is what I'm saying. And I guess at the age of 10, I was having a real difficult time with reading. I was always a slow reader with a low attention span. I was always looking at uh, I decided to go out and make a special effort to work with kids because I really didn't want anybody to go through what I had gone through. The neat thing about graphics is every job was different. It was amazing to see that people can amount to something like that. And it's just, it was really interesting to see that maybe I could be that successful when I'm older. And I loved seeing that because I'd love to be a successful um, businessman. The problem is if you're not someone like me that has gone through this, you as the parent or adult, you can tell your kid that all you want, but you know what? It's not the same. And it's frustrating because I remember one mom said, well, you know, I tell him that he can do this. And I said, yeah, I know, but you know what? You don't have dyslexia. You don't have a learning challenge. It's not the same thing. And others obviously would use something more like tongs for picking up. I know it'll be hard to get there, but it'll be worth it once I get there. And I can see that from Jane Mandarino's speech knowing that I had a harder time getting there than the average person. I find it inspiring in as much as it's something that I certainly couldn't do. The fact that he's taken a thousand dollar company to a 14 million dollar company over the period of 14 years is <clears throat> something to behold. It really is. So then we'll I just can't believe the stuff. It's unbelievable. For a guy who's going to work in a gas station. Thank you, Jake. Thank you, Joe. Thank you.